Good day YouTubers. Have you ever been out trolling and you can see the fish that you're trolling for on the sounder, be they mackerel or whatever else it is you're after, they're sitting on the sounder, you know the exact depth they're sitting at, but they're just not taking your trolling lure. Well, my question is, is that trolling lure at the same depth as the fish? Now I know you can adjust the trolling lure as to how deep it goes, or at least on the trolling boards you can. On the lures they run at a set depth, or at a roundabout a set depth. I imagine that all of that is dependent not only on how you set your trolling board up, or how your lure is designed, but also on the speed the boat's travelling at and how much line you have out. I've never seen any video that actually explains how to work out how deep your lure actually is. And that's my problem. I don't think I'm getting my lure at the depth that the fish are. So I had to figure out a way to do that and what I came up with was to get a downrigger. Then I know exactly how deep my lure is going to be running. And this is the installation video. Hope you enjoy it. When I started looking I was after a manual downrigger, something pretty cheap, just an introductory sort of model. But as I was looking, I came across the fact that Canon offers a model that has bottom tracking, which keeps your lure at the exact distance off the bottom that you want it to be. It was also on special at 45% off. How could I resist? Like any kid with a new toy, I just had to get it out of the box as quickly as possible so that I could have a play with it. It came with all the hardware that I needed to fit it to my boat, but it doesn't come with the downrigger balls which have to be purchased separately. It's also worth mentioning that it comes with two standard clips to attach your line to the wire, but they're not suitable for stacking the line, at least not as far as I can see. If you want to stack two rods, you will need to purchase some suitable clips for that. All right, first thing to do is to locate where I want to put this, and I'm thinking for the first one on the boat, this is a pretty good location here. When it's in operation, it'll be turning out that way. Stowed, it can turn up this way and everything will be inside the rail. Being out that way, while it's in operation, I can sit on the pilot's chair and still reach the buttons to operate the up and down uh, as I'm watching the sounder. If it was on the other side of the boat, it would be much harder to do that, so I'm thinking that for this first one at least, this is where I want to put it. Now there's no way it's going to turn right around with the arm on there, so that's as far as it'll ever go. I can turn it right in the other way as long as I don't have a rod in the holder. So I'm thinking with this edge about in line with the middle of the speaker, looks to be a pretty good spot to have it. I've got to get up and have a look underneath and see if there's anything in the way of doing that. But at the moment, that's looking pretty right. That's the swivel base that it actually mounts on. And this just pulls in and out. So I can put that there and just pull them in and out there to operate it. That'll be fine. That speaker goes back a lot further than I thought underneath once I got in and refreshed my memory on it. But I can get my hand up there to do the nuts up, so I'm going to go with that. I just noticed this. It's a real nice touch. These covers here. When you unplug it, you can put the insert in, which keeps the whole thing watertight. All watertight now. I really like that. That is well thought out. And something that, you know, I bought electrical stuff before. I've never seen that sort of thing before on electrical stuff. Hydraulics, you usually get it. Because when you unplug hydraulic couplings, you need to stop the dirt getting in. Great. Really like that. Thought it was worth a mention. I'm just going to use this as a template to mark the holes here. I will just check all four bolts go through. It's a long four that you need for this. Well, I did say to use a 932 inch drill, and that is because of the difficulty of getting all four holes inside lined up. They wanted to go a little bit bigger than a quarter, but I don't have one. So I'm just going to have to ease it a bit with the quarter inch drill. That looks like it should be about right. There you go. Get that bolted on and bolt the swivel on. And I'll just take you through the contents of the packet. I've used four of these long screws. There's five of them there. There's also five nylock nuts 
four of them for attaching the plate that I'm putting onto the side of the boat. Four washers to go with them. Not sure what that's for yet. There's four shorter bolts for putting the swivel base to the quick release. And then you've got your terminal tackle and your hook for hooking it all up. I'll bolt that base plate on next. There's nothing to see there because I'm working underneath the gunnels. And then we'll come back and have a look at putting the quick release piece on. Now just be aware that although these bolts are all the same length, one of the two inch bolts has a different head to the other and that is this one, slightly smaller. It's needed to put the boom into the downrigger unit. These other four that have the same head are used to fasten the deck plate on. Don't get them confused. And just so you don't think this is too easy for words, You've got to get your spanner. Well, first off, you've got to get your nuts on the bottom of the bolts. And just be aware that because it's under the gunnel, you can't see what you're doing. You've got to do it by feel. And because it's under the gunnel, you've got all sorts of sharp bits of fiberglass or sharp screws sticking out from speakers that nobody's bothered to trim off because it's under the gunnel on the other side. So expect to get a little bit of damage, just minor scratches, but it always happens. Then you get your spanner up. And again, you've got to do this by feel. Get it onto the nut and tighten them all down. Still rotates, so we're all good. Next thing to do is to put the release on for the downrigger. These are just a matter of the four shorter bolts and drop them in and screw them into the hole in the plate below. Don't want to screw the guts out of it, but give them a decent nip up. Just make sure they won't come undone easily. All swivels around quite fine. So far so good. Tighten that nut up. Yep, he's good. Probably in my there. And I can see where I want my plug to be probably under that light. And be a good spot for it. This is the next few things we want. We want the quarter inch nut, which is not a nylock nut. We want the hook and the sleeve and the telescoping assembly. And start off, put the nut on the hook and wind it all the way down for now. And then put the hook into the sleeve. You don't want it to go all the way through, so just keep an eye on the inside. When you can see it there before it goes through, that's enough and slide it on to the telescope. Then we need to put the telescope into the downrigger. In the back side of this there's a recess of the same shape as the nut. Fit your nut in there. Make sure your hole's lined up, which is not quite. Out there. And slip your bolt through. Next job is to put this where we want it. You can put it anywhere you like along here, but I don't see any reason for it to have it any further forth than the as far back as it will fit. We want to tighten this on, just have a hand tight. I'm going to have to go a little bit more than that, just so I can hook it in. And then tighten that nut up on it so that it can't undo. Because if you don't tighten, that's a lock nut. If you don't tighten it up onto there, this will eventually work loose and you may lose it. These are the next two bits we need. The end of the beam and the screw to hold it in place. Fortunately, we loosen this off, we can rotate that round so this hole is nice and easy to get to. Focus down in there, make sure your holes are all lined up, just about right there. Doesn't matter where that screw sits. If you want to be neat, you can turn it round so it's down the bottom. Or if you want to be safe, so you can see where it's done up all the time. Turn it so it's up the top. I prefer it up the top because I can visually check that it's not coming loose. Okay, and that's as far back as they go once it's all assembled. It sticks out just a little bit on each segment. This is the rod holder assembly. You've got the base, the holder itself, two um, screws for putting it on and two springs put on the screws to give them some tension so they don't come loose by themselves. So just like that. You just need a little bit of thought on the rod holders, unless you're getting two rod holders to go on here. I've got a rod holder on the boat down there, so I'm going to put the rod holder for this on this side, so that it just keeps the rods 
separated a little bit should I decide to stack two glues. I'll give it a go at that and see how it works. I can change it while I'm out there if I need to. I can always use that other rod holder anyway. If it doesn't work too well until I figure out how I'm going to use this one. Need to get some of our wire out now. Fasten it in there with the rubber band. Just undo that. Pull enough out to give us enough to work with and then we'll bring the camera over here so you can see what I'm up to. Now these are the pieces you need. You need the terminating end, the rubber stopper and the swivel with the clip on it. First of all, feed the cable through the rubber stopper. Now, you need to look at the instructions for this because it is fairly complicated. We better put this swivel on here next because we need it on for the wire. Okay, so get that on there. As I said, you, you do need the instructions here. I don't think I could have worked it out without it. Now uh, we're going in hole A, which is the one on the extreme left. And that feeds the wire down into that uh, groove there that's made for it. But we need to also go through the hole at the bottom, which is a bit hard. Oh, there we go. Then it goes around in the groove there, but we've got to go through the swivel at the same time. So make sure you're getting through the swivel like that. Back, there's a hole in there to go back through. It's just very hard for me to see black on black. Really made, if they made this look a lighter colour, then the hole would show up dark against it and I would find it a lot easier to thread. A few years ago I could have, wouldn't have had any trouble, but these days it gets a bit harder. I'll be very careful, don't, don't. Don't separate these strands out, it'll be an awful to try. Oh, I've got it. If anyone else has trouble seeing that, the way I got it was to get the white paper behind the hole so I could see the white paper through the hole and gave me a clue as to where it was. So anyway, that one comes out hole B and then we've got to go back in hole C, which is another hard one to find. Uh, yeah, I'll do the same trick. I'll focus in on the paper underneath it, which makes it a lot easier to get through. And you push that all the way in there, and then you start pulling the wire back so that it's all nice and tight and sitting in the grooves where it's supposed to sit. The key, when you put it through that last hole, the wire goes down and stops just there. Then you fold your clip up and press in together. <clears throat> there we go. There we go, that's got any terminal tackle applied. Almost forgot, there's a couple of other things to show you. This I imagine is an emergency crank to crank it up if the power goes for some reason. And this I imagine and that's a reverse thread. The left hand set thread instead of the right hand thread, you screw it anti clockwise to do it up. And that, when you tighten it, that stops the wheel from coming undone. So you can loosen it to lower it manually, or I imagine you leave it uh, with clutch on so that the electric motor does the work for you. I've just got to join a bit onto the plug that came with it. Now I've got some slightly heavier wire because it's always better to go heavier than lighter. And I've got these heat shrink solder joins. As you heat them, the solder melts, joins the wires, and then they shrink down onto the insulation as well. There we go. Ain't no way that's coming undone. I'll just do the same with the other one. That's the things I can get them off eBay, they're pretty cheap. And they're just excellent for joining uh, wires and marine applications. Any application really if you're doing something on the car or whatever. I don't think they're 240 volt rated. I don't know that I'd be using them for 240 volts, but anything short of that, they're excellent. The wires push in together so they've got lots of overlap and contact. And then as I said, just heat it up and away you go. Keep your finger out of the way because it does get pretty hot. You can see that wire that solder's melted in there. I bought a pair of downrigger balls from eBay. I got one eight pound and one 10 pound as a pair and they came with a bonus pack of sinkers. And let's face it, you can never have too many sinkers at the rate I lose them anyway. 
And just got another little test here. See how it goes. Let's bring it out over the side a bit so that we don't go bang in the bay. There we go. That's the weight on it. Powering up. Let's go down. Woo! And up. Okay, well that's easy enough to control. Yep, that works perfectly. Really happy with that. Well thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I'll keep you posted on how it all pans out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the notification bell beside it if you don't want to miss any of those updates. Until then, good fishing.